What is up, Math Meets? Welcome back to another episode of Math with Dr. Math. And today, we're going to look at the distance and midpoint formula. So join me on this ride. All right, Math Meets. So let's go ahead and we're going to start with the social distance formula. I mean, the distance formula. All right. So before we begin and jumping in this, I would like to thank our sponsors. Today's sponsor is the letter S. All right here, so this is what we're looking at. We're trying to find the distance between two points. All right, so we're gonna label these points uh, our first point, we'll call it x1, y1. Our second point, we'll call it x2, y2. And it doesn't matter which point you call x1, y1, or x2, y2, as long as you're consistent with your labeling, all right? So this is our formula to find the distance. Uh, you take x2 and you subtract x1 from it, and that quantity, you square it. And then you do the same thing with the pair of y's, and you square that. So after you sum, right, you take the sum of those two, uh, you square root it. So let's dive in here and let's look at an example and make sure you stick uh, around to the end uh, because we have some practice problems for you. All right, so here we go. Let's start with our first example here. So find the distance between two points. All right, so whenever we're finding distances between two points, this is what we're gonna do. So it says find the distance between the points negative five and one, so negative five, one, and seven, negative three. We're gonna go ahead and look at the exact distance, and then we're gonna approximate this to two decimal places. All right, so let's look at our solution here. So what I'm first gonna do with these two points is I'm gonna label them. So I always label my points, and I like doing this really with anything, because math, being successful, is all about organization. So I'll call this a point x1, y1, and this point x2, y2. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I label everything so that when I plug it into our formula, I know exactly where everything goes, all right? It's like my mom always used to say. Life is a box of chocolates, Forrest. You never know what you're gonna get. All right, so here we go. We have D equals the square root of, we got our y2 minus y1. The reason I have parentheses here is because what a lot of folks, need, just because they see a minus in the formula, they forget that this five was negative. So make sure you're a good user of those parentheses so that you do not forget a negative sign. This is the biggest error that people make all the time, all right? And then we're gonna take that quantity and we're gonna square it, all right? We're gonna do the same thing with our y value. So this is y2 minus our y1, right? So all we're doing is we're applying the distance formula here. So we're just plugging it in to our distance formula. All right, so when we simplify our first um, argument here, we get 12 and we're gonna square it, right? So this quantity, we're gonna square it. So we get 12 in here. And when we subtract negative three minus one, we get negative four and we're gonna square it. So again, I like going step by step. Uh, just to make sure I don't make a little mistake. All right, so we'll go ahead and simplify the radical. So we get 144 plus 16. So 144 plus 16, and that gives me 160. We always, write this down, we always simplify our radicals as much as possible. So the 160 uh, turns into four square root of 10. And we punch that into our calculator and we approximate it to 12.65. So this is our approximation to two decimal places, and this is what we call our exact answer. And if you're interested in how did we go from here to here, uh, then I encourage you to watch our video below when we talk about simplifying radicals. So what we did is we took, let me use a different color here, we took that 160 and we broke it down into two factors. And the first factor that I break it down into, that 16 has to be the largest perfect square. So in that video linked below, I go step by step of how exactly this looks if this doesn't make sense at first glance, all right? So I encourage you to watch that. Uh, the square root of 16, that's where that four came from. 
square root of 10, we can't do nothing with it, so it just comes along for the ride. All right, so this is how we're gonna use the distance formula. And just to recap, be very careful with those negatives because that's where the majority of people that make mistakes, that's the place where they make them. All right, so there's our distance formula. Let's go ahead and talk about our midpoint formula. So when we have a line segment, and I'll show you a graph in a few minutes, uh, we're gonna look at from that line segment, where's that point smack in the middle? That's what we're looking for. So here's the midpoint formula of a line segment. So what we do is we're really taking the averages of our x values and you're taking the average of the y values. And remember, uh, when we're looking at the midpoint, it's a point. So you're gonna need an x and a y. So you're gonna end up for your answer is gonna be an ordered pair. Uh, the mistake people make here is they just say, oh, x equals whatever, or y equals whatever. But no, 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 we're actually looking for a point, not just a single number. So that's another good thing to look out for. All right, so let's jump in here and let's do an example. All right, so before we get in this one, uh, it's obvious that we're gonna have to smash that like button and go ahead and subscribe and tell a friend or 10,000 of them to make sure to check out Dr. Math as we're blowing it up here. All right, so we're gonna find the midpoint of the line segment. So to do this, all right, whenever they ask us to find a midpoint, uh, so we got some points here, they involve decimals, that's all good. The rules don't change. If they put fractions here, the rules don't change either. So just because they're fractions, right, don't be scared, the rules do not change. So I'll call this x1, y1, that's what we did here. x2, uh, y2, and that's what we do here. So wherever I see my x2 and my x1 and y1, uh, x1 and x2, that's where I place them, right? Because this is x1 plus x2. So you add up your x's. In real life, that's probably not a good idea. You're not going for, for good, are you, honey? You're going nowhere, Happy, and you're taking me with you. You know what? You're a lousy kindergarten teacher. I've seen those finger paintings you bring home and they suck! I'm sorry, babe. All right, so you take the average of your x's, and then you have y1 plus y2, just like the midpoint formula says, and you divide that by two. If you're doing this in your calculator, uh, make sure that you either put parentheses around the numerator, what's on top, um, because a lot of calculators, I see a lot of people do this plus this, divided by two, and it gives them a different answer. So there are two things. Either make sure that you use parentheses around this when you're plugging it in, or, after you go ahead and do that addition, hit enter and then divide that answer by two. Because if not, your calculator will give you a different answer. So just be aware of that. So once you do that, this is what we're left with, right? 0.7 is our x value and negative one half or 0.5 is our y value. So there's our x value, our y value. And together, right, together, that gives us our point, the midpoint. So if I'm looking at a graph here, there's my first, uh, my second point, right? So this was x2, y2. There's my first point down here, uh, my x1, y1. And if I'm trying to find that middle ground, right, that midpoint, boom, there's our answer. So I could always plot this just to make sure that visually this makes sense. All right, folks, so there you have it. And before you leave, make sure you try these on your own. So let's take a look. So here is a practice problem for you. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna find the midpoint of the line segment with these endpoints, all right? And here is your second problem where you're gonna find the distance between these two points. And we provided the answers for you to make sure you could check your work. All right, folks, so that's a wrap. Don't forget to smash that like button again, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.